In this video, we're going to give you the 26 known issues going on currently for Halo 4's flighting process and how I think they don't quite have them all listed right here. So let's get right into the video. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the YouTube algorithm so more people get a chance to see this video to stay in the know with everything going on in Halo. Well, the Halo 4 flight has recently dropped for us PC and Xbox players as well and for the most part it's been playing rather well, though there are certainly its issues and in this video we're going to go over all the known issues currently right now in this flight and how I mentioned earlier that there might be some bugs I don't think they quite have listed in here. We have four major sections. We have multiplayer, campaign, forge, and global as in just like the general experience with this as well. So we're gonna break this all down for you guys. So, so let's start off with the multiplayer side of things, which I'm sure most of you are probably concerned about. Platform-based matchmaking currently allows players on different platforms to match with one when enabled. Number two on this list here, when playing with a centered crosshair, hill confirmation text can overlap a weapon or vehicle's crosshairs. Positions and or movements of players in sit rec replays, aka kill cams, do not always correspond to their actions in game. And boot player prompt contains reference to the Xbox One console and local split screen functionality when the targeted player is on PC. But with a platform-based matchmaking not working properly, that's certainly a major issue when it comes to cross-play and giving players the options that they want to make sure that they're playing with the players that they want to match with. And I actually didn't know that the kill cams are referred to as sit wrecks. I, I did not know that. But uh, I think that's kind of been an issue with just the Halo 4 engine just in general. Pretty sure like back in the day, Kill cams were even pretty janky back in the original 360 days for Halo 4. I mean, they're still pretty janky right now for the uh, Halo 2 anniversary as well, since they utilize the same engine on there. But to be honest, I wouldn't expect that to change maybe ever really. I think it's a major issue within the, the engine itself. Now let's jump into the global issues. Now this is a long list of things. This is kind of the bulk of where most of the content is when it comes to these errors. Playing on an Xbox console, the push to talk voice chat option must be enabled to participate in in-game voice chat. In the controls tab of the settings menu, the icons displayed alongside the preferred input device option are placeholder images. The region names in the network tab of the settings menu are all lowercase. List of the regions in the network tab of the settings menu do not reflect each region's population status. The population column always displays population in each region. When using a keyboard or gamepad to navigate through the list of the regions, there is no highlight effect on the region checkboxes. When playing in any language other than English, some of the options in the network tab of the settings menu do not have the correct name. Option to enable or disable VSync is present on Xbox One consoles. In the video tab of the settings menu, changing the per title gamma options do not affect the preview image. On PC, the graphics quality settings for Halo 4 incorrectly include a non-functional option for enabling or disabling blood effects. In borderless window mode on PC, using the in-game settings menu to switch to a secondary monitor and reduce the resolution scale to 75% or below causes the menus and gameplay to render at different sizes. When playing with a mouse and keyboard, ordinance drops are bound to the arrow keys and cannot be rebound. Pressing an arrow key after assigning another function to that key causes both the bound action and the appropriate ordinance drop to be triggered. Sometimes when entering the competitive games menu, some playlist names do not appear correctly. The limited region server selected notification on top of the competitive games menu display is incorrect text. The locked and unlocked icons on the competitive games menu are placeholder images. Input device icons are not scaled correctly in the roster resulting in a compressed or squished appearance. Input device icons only appear for party leaders and if the party members are using different input devices, 
the leader's icon may represent another party member's input device. Heads up display elements will appear to lag behind camera movements, especially rotating quickly. Filtering will be visible in gameplay for Halo 4. Okay guys, Kevin from the future here. There are some more bugs that recently came out and I figure I need to put these in a video because this has kind of been all encompassing all the issues going on with the MTC flight right now. So let's get right into it. Now this issue I've seen multiple times. This is a issue with King of the Hill where the you can see the hill through the map and it's just a white square this isn't like me doing really funky editing or anything like that this is just actually what's happening in the game i've seen it on twitter multiple times i've seen it on reddit a couple times as well uh so this is definitely something that needs to get worked out i've never seen anything like that before which is it's funny and i'm pretty sure they'll be able to figure it out but for some odd reason like wherever that center point of the hill is it creates this big white square for whatever reason so hopefully uh, 343 can figure this out before it releases out for everyone on the PC. Here's an issue with the level composer that apparently it's really dark, but honestly, like, this looks pretty cool. Like, I would not feel bad at all if uh, this actually was just how the game ended up being released, because this looks pretty freaking sweet. Like, I love the atmosphere and the dark. Look at how the lighting just plays on the floor and reflects like that. You know, I feel like it creates more of an ambiotic kind of feel, if that's even a word. It looks freaking awesome. And that's actually one bug I think that I wish it would stay in. Now this is an issue I was hoping would be fixed up with the release on PC, but it looks like it's not going to. This might be like a hardwired MCC issue is the lighting on this specific cutscene right here, guys. This is a very serious cutscene that basically we're Chief and Lassie go F you, Del Rio. We're gonna go off and do our own thing. Very tr major turning point within the story. And you can see how the original Xbox 360 version the lighting looks well, the background's kind of, you know, hidden away, your main characters are lit up properly, it puts the focus where it needs to be. Where now on the MCC, even on the PC flight, you can still see how the ambient lighting is much brighter. So yeah, that is a big long list of issues currently plaguing this now obviously bringing in some new features like crossplay, input based matchmaking, a region selection on top of the game itself. Yeah, there's going to be some additional issues right there. Most of them are with the new features. Things like with the game itself, it's actually not that many errors going along with it. It's most of the new stuff that's coming along with there. Some of the maybe issues they probably didn't even think about, like the for some reason when your ordinance drops are bound to arrow keys that for some reason you can't just change that for whatever reason. I certainly experienced the input device icon only showing for the party leader or if it's somebody else who's using their input device and different things because uh, we're supposed to know exactly what input device we're playing against for people in like the beginning parts of the lobbies. We're supposed to know like if they're on console, if they're on PC, if they're using a controller, if they're using a mouse or keyboard. And so that's really good information to know the kind of players that you're playing against just to kind of understand like how the matchmaking is working and then uh, if you don't like what's happening you can switch it up and turn it on and off how you please i would say that the heads up display has been a bit laggy as well when it comes to its movements because in this game they implemented a bit of a floaty effect when it comes to the heads up display in halo 4 and in this game that's yeah, a little delay so it kind of it's noticeable when you're playing but it's kind of like a peripheral vision so you don't notice it that bad so it's not like game breaking or anything but it's certainly there one thing i was actually having an issue with i was trying to deselect servers i did not want to match like say like over in like asia or whatever i didn't want to even bother connecting to those i couldn't deselect all of them for some reason i could only select deselect like one that was it for whatever reason now for the campaign side of things we had for one music during in-game cutscenes are affected by game effects volume slider Number two for campaign, when playing co-op on PC, changing some graphic settings in the video tab of the settings menu will cause the settings to be grayed out upon return to the video tab. On Xbox, accessing a terminal will close the game and launch the Halo channel application. But you definitely need to have the volume changes be actually working properly. That's a very important thing to have working right there. I haven't experienced the co-op campaign yet. I will definitely play out later in this flight. Uh, definitely with the Halo channel, I think it's still there and up and running, but it's just not really enjoyable to work with. It's much better to have it just all in game. That's kind of wish how they were doing the uh, cutscenes for Spartan Ops for Halo 4. But sadly enough, it's all tied to the Halo channel. I tried clicking on the Halo channel link within the MCC and it wasn't loading. So I don't know how you're supposed to watch those cutscenes or if you're supposed to just enjoy the gameplay Spartan Ops in uh, 
you might have not that many people playing it. And for the forge section, I mean, there's actually only one issue. When the field of view option is set to 78 or higher, grabbing an object in edit mode causes the camera to zoom in. I believe I noticed this at first when I was making my video showcasing the flying pelicans and things like that. Uh, it wasn't too bothering to me, but obviously it could be quite annoying when you're trying to grab options and you're just like zooming in and out constantly. Yes, that could be quite annoying. Now there are two honorable mentions that I certainly experienced and many other people have as well that are not actually listed on here. One is that oftentimes when you're using like a power weapon, specifically I came across this with a sniper rifle that if you're getting headshots, you'll get the kill, but it doesn't show up in the kill feed. You don't get any points showing up in your screen that you actually got the kill and you don't have any icons for like a medal or anything that's showing up either. It's just like it never happens. But score-wise, it happens, but you get no visual confirmation that you did it. So you're like, wait, did I kill that guy? I'm pretty sure I did. Everything else I do, I get visual confirmations. Why not this one? Another thing I saw, which is actually pretty funny, is that you'll just see like dismembered legs just walk across a kill cam for whatever reason. Like, so I guess maybe they won't render the top half of a play of a player within the uh, kill cam. So you just see some legs just walking across the screen, like for whatever reason. It's pretty funny, actually. It kind of blew my mind when I first saw that one. Now, I don't know if either one of those errors were initially just in the 360 version. But if any of you guys recognize that being an issue, you know, let me know in the comment section down below. So that might sound like a lot of issues coming with Halo 4 on PC. And yes, the, some of these are rather affecting you know, your experience when it comes to playing the game though overall guys like it's still pretty fun the unlimited frames work really well the hit detection is great jumping in and out of matches is super quick the cross play works except for i guess when it comes to uh platform based matchmaking sometimes it just doesn't allow it and you can just match whoever you want even if you turn it off personally i want to keep it on just because i want to have that better population size to be able to party up with people for sure. But for now, we're currently playing Halo 4 on PC and it's pretty dang awesome. If you want to catch us live, want to test out some crossplay, check out out in the description down below. I've got a link to my Twitch channel, guys. We stream every Tuesday and Thursday and once on the weekends as well. Make sure to give a follow on the Twitch channel, guys. If you missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right over here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos. You've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.